Hi, this is Kevin with Naples Lawn Service, and today we're going to talk about this new post hole digger, PHD 100. So we ordered this PHD 100 through John Deere, uh, through our local dealer, Everglades Equipment Group, and uh, came in in a couple weeks. This is the PHD 100. PHD stands for post hole digger. It comes in a 100, 200, 300, or, or 400. Uh, based upon how much horsepower your tractor has. What I'm running here is a, is a, a 300 series 3025E. Uh, you can order different size augers with it. And what I got is the 9 inch wide auger times 36 inches deep. And depending on how big an auger you want, you'll have to get a bigger and bigger uh, post hole digger. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this thing. We got this for uh, putting in posts, whether it be uh, something the customer might need. Like we're going to offer uh, starting a little, little little gardens for people. So we bought a tiller so we can till up a little plot of land for them, not too big. And then uh, we got this, and this we can put in posts around the garden, uh, poles uh, like, like this or like that. But fencing or fencing around it, not this type of fencing, this is more for cattle, but smaller fencing around these gardens to keep these critters out. So uh, this that's one use we're going to have with this when we offer people to put in some little, uh, little, little gardens and being able to fence in the gardens. Alright, so these uh, are listed under John Deere, but they came out with the name uh, Roto Mech on them. And uh, I guess they're Frontiers, but they're either Frontiers or, or they're this, but uh, John, it's, it's the one John Deere sells, so that's where I got it from. Okay, so to install this, there are no videos online that we could find, so I'm going to make it easy for you and give you a few tips. I'm not going to break this thing back down and put it all back together, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a few tips that, that's going to help you. First of all, it's not iMatch compatible, so you're going to have to take your iMatch off. Uh, the second thing is, you're going to have to take this off, okay? This bar usually goes right in here to hook up your equipment. Well, this has got to come off, all right? Because this uh, digger is going to hook up right here. It just hooks up with one big pin and one, one of these safety pins. And then the other two points are going to hook up your three points hooking up here and here. Now, these... Uh, needed to be adjusted out maybe an inch or two so you just spin this here and you spin the other one and you can make these arms go in or out to fit this thing just right so that's how it's going to attach you got to take this bar off and then you got to adjust these these linkages these chain linkages to go out and in a little bit you just turn this turn this area turn this thing right here with a wrench and it's going to make these go in and out so that's how you're going to hook it up and uh, then you got your your PTO uh, shaft what you want to do is pull this thing apart put a thin layer of grease on this okay this just pulls apart it'll just pull right off so uh, it doesn't come hooked up by the way that just comes with the shaft so you just pull the shaft apart put yourself a thin layer of grease in there shove that shaft back together um, when you do hook up these these uh, this shaft there's a little button that's on the uh, yoke down there and you're going to actually end up pushing that button all right so i pulled this shaft off here here's your here's your little button right here okay this is what you're going to push in when you slide slide that thing on there so that's where you're going to find also you can see a grease fitting in there see that grease fitting that zerk fitting right there you want to make sure that you pump that put some grease in there on each end before you hook this Hook this up into your spline. All right, so see this little button? It's just going to push like that. Okay, you're going to slide your shaft on there, push your little button, and it's going to go on, oh, just like that. Okay, so and then you can pull it backwards a little bit. You'll hear it a little click, click. There you go. That's how easy that is. And then you're going to hook up your safety chain right here, just like that. Same thing on this end, you got a little safety chain, hooks up right here. Okay, so that's how you 
put your drive shaft on. You you got to grease this zerk, grease that zerk, break it apart, put a thin layer of grease in there. And that's how you shove it on both ends. You got to hook up these safety chains, and that's how that's going to go on there. Now, when you're installing this, there's a shear bolt that's got to go in here, okay? It's about two and a half inches long, and it's a quarter inch diameter, and there's a locking nut, okay? So you can't forget to put the shear bolt in there and bolt it on, and then there's a little Allen wrench screw. The Allen wrench screw is to hold this. If the shear bolt breaks, the Allen wrench screw is to hold the shaft together, hold it to here. So the little Allen wrench screw... Um, and by the way, you access all this stuff by popping off these little covers right here. Okay, you pop off these covers, and that's how you that's how you're going to get into your holes. To, there's another one over here. See, so same thing. Pop that off. Anyway, that shear bolt, the the Allen wrench bolt, is going to go all the way in, and then you're going to until it bottoms out, and you back it off no more than a quarter of an inch. Then you tighten down the nut. Okay, so you got to put the Allen wrench bolt in, and you got to put the shear bolt in. The shear bolt, like I said, it's a quarter inch by two and a half inches. And the shear bolt is in there, so if you're digging and you hit some roots and this thing locks up, the shear bolt will break and not, not something in your gearbox. Okay, so you want to have that shear bolt in there. Otherwise, you, otherwise you're going to have a problem. So this is how you get to your shear bolt. This is how you get to your, your uh, Allen wrench bolt. So you've got two different bolts in, bolts in here that you got to do. All right, now they tell you to do this stuff in order, hook this up, put on your shaft, get your gearbox done, with, get your uh, shear bolt in there and your other thing, and you're going to do the auger last, okay? And the auger is going to go on, you got two bolts, you see around here, you've got access holes, okay? You might need to spin around that drive shaft till then you can get to those bolt holes, but you've got one going this way and one going this way, like this. Those are, I believe those were like three eighths by three inches or something. I can't remember exactly, but you got two bolts. It's gonna hold that auger on with some self-locking nuts. And that's how you're gonna put your auger on. If you did, if it wasn't cooperating, there are four screws that are bolts that are like half inch long, four of them. And you can take them off and then you can slide this thing around if you needed to. Okay, if things weren't lining up for you. But if you can just spin that drive shaft, they should line up where you get your access holes in there for your, your nuts and bolts. And I'm pretty sure they were like quarter 20 or 3 eighths or something like, something like that. And then last but not least, don't run this without putting in your gear oil, okay? Come around here, I'll show you. This shows your oil level is right here, okay? Uh, you want to go ahead and fill this up with some, some gear oil, like 90 weight, 80, 90, something like that. You fill it up until it comes out this hole. So you pull this off, pull this off. Put your gear oil in there. When it starts coming out this hole, put that cap on, put this cap on, and you're done. And that's how you put your gear oil in. So just to recap, hooking this thing up. You want to pull off your eye match, throw it aside if you have one. You want to pull off, pull off this adjustable link right here that usually goes in here. You want to pull that off. Okay. You're going to lift this thing up. You're going to put it here. Put your safety pin on you're gonna hook it up here hook it up there adjust these links in and out so it's all stable okay i showed you how to put the drive shaft on you're going to put a thin coat of oil on the, on the two drive shafts and slide them together um, and this one it shows one hole in the owner's manual but this thing came with two so i guess you have an adjustment you can put it on there two different ways i just put it in that one and, and it works for this particular tractor. Um, then you're going to put in your shear pin, you're going to put in your hex nut, which is on your uh, Allen wrench, put that in all the way, back it up quarter inch, tighten down the, the nut, you're going to grease this zerk, grease that zerk, okay, you're going to make sure you got to fill this thing up with your gear oil, really important because it doesn't come with it, okay, and then you're going to put your auger on, you got two bolts that go in there. You can take loosen up this cap if you need to move it, or just move your drive shaft around until the bolt holes line up. Put those bolts in there, and you are good to go. Okay, so what you're going to do here is you're going to lower that thing down. Okay, <laughs> right now the tractor will be running. Okay, I'm going to lower that down. Look until it hits the ground. Okay, when it's getting ready to drill. 
okay? Then I'm gonna bring my tractor forwards or backwards a couple inches, whatever, to make sure this thing's nice and lined up. Then I'm gonna set my brake, okay? And I'm gonna start drilling. I just did that with the tractor off so you didn't have to hear the tractor running, but I'll go ahead and start it up now. that thing down it doesn't take much that thing will suck itself down I'm going to show you here in just a minute but that bit will suck itself down and then what you want to do is start backing up easy when it starts coming out I would shut that PTO off and then just drag that bit out of the rest of the way because if you try to drill it backwards and uh, try to drill as you're coming out you're going to knock a bunch of sand down that hole so after you drill your hole just bring it up a little bit shut shut off your PTO and then just suck up that that uh, that auger out of that hole. <laughs> this auger nobody should be around this thing as you can see it bounces it swings it's all over the place nobody should be standing here when you're running this <coughs> for safety <coughs> and uh, this thing is very powerful I had some old electrical lines in the ground I didn't, didn't know where they were I figured I'd miss them and uh, boy I'll tell you it grabbed that 12 to UF and it snapped it off like it was a Dorito or something I mean it literally ate up some 12-2 UF in about two seconds. Broke it apart from itself and ripped it out of the ground. So this thing is super powerful. And uh, those wires weren't live yet. They were old wires. I, they were not even energized yet. But I knew they were in the ground somewhere. I just, I just didn't figure they were right there. But that's how I learned uh, one of the th things about this. So always make sure you know where, know where you're drilling. Make sure there's no water lines down there, no sprinkler pipes, no electrical wires and nobody's nobody standing around when you're doing your drilling all right here's just some info for you this phd 100 it is for 15 to 25 horsepower tractors okay um which i have uh 305e so this is this is 25 horsepower uh, so you know if you had a 3032 or 3038 it's then you got to go up up in your auger size Okay, this is a PHC 100, 15 to 25 horsepower. If you got 18 to 40 horsepower, you can use a PHD 200. Okay, it's 15 to 40. So I could have that if I wanted to. Also, if you have a PHD 300, it's good for 18 to 50 horsepower. Okay, so it's even bigger. I'm sure the bigger the, bigger the number, you're getting a bigger gearbox, stronger things and all that. And then the PH 400 is for uh, 18 horsepower up to up to 90 horsepower. So they all have 
uh, different different uh, ranges of uh, for different horsepower. So, you know, some are built stronger, some are built weaker. But anyway, for the, what I have, 3025E, this thing is sweet. It just it drills holes very easily and very nicely. Of course, you're going to pay more money. Now, this 100 here, this is about a $1,700 part. But then you've got to buy the auger too. And I think the auger was like another 500 or something. This particular auger. And that's the other thing. Uh, if you the, the more you go up from PHD 100 to 200, 300, 400, you get you can get wider augers and longer augers. You can get you know 48 inch augers or whatever, and 12 inches wide, and you can get all all sorts of stuff. That's probably why you get it would have a higher horsepower rating too. But uh, this thing you could put this 36 inch long auger, and it's nine inches wide, so this should take care of just about any of your common needs around your farm or house or what have you. Okay, so the one more thing, you have an option of buying a stand, okay? This thing's sitting on a stand, the stand's like over $600, it's a lot of money. But uh, it'll set it up nice, won't be dragging around getting all scratched up. But uh, you can store it on the stand, it got a little hook there, it holds the drive shaft. And uh, this is how it's going to hold up the gearbox and pretty much just going to keep it up, looking nice, off the ground. Your other option is to store it, is just to back it up to a piece of sod and just drill that down into the ground halfway and it'll just stand up by itself with a hole that you drilled in the ground. But uh, if you got the extra money and if you want to spend it, you can get this stand here to hold it up. So there you have it. That's our video on our new PHD 100 uh, post hole digger. If you like the video, hit the like button, and we're going to have a lot more videos coming out. If you want to subscribe, and this is Kevin with Naples Lawn Service.